Hey, everybody. Welcome to Fire Engineering's Hump Day Hangout and to our show, The Issues and Challenges and today's fire service. I'm Chief Rick Lasky, and joining me shortly is going to be my buddy and Hump Day Hangout co-host, uh, Louisville Assistant Chief Terry McGrath. And uh, we've got a great show lined up for you today, uh, <clears throat> trying to work through a couple technical issues here uh, on, on, on their end out there, but uh, they should be along shortly. But as a reminder for today, if you have any questions, uh, head over to Twitter and send them our way. Just remember to add hashtag FE Talk for Fire Engineering Talk, hashtag FE Talk, um, uh, so we can get your questions addressed and everything else. A um, couple things I want to talk about. Before we get going, uh, we want to... Uh, uh, throw a, a very special shout out to our law enforcement family, the brothers and sisters on the law enforcement side. Uh, this is their week, uh, uh, National Police Week. Um, you know, it doesn't take a you know a rocket scientist to um, you know talk about the fact that they're having a rough go right now. Um, uh, law enforcement needs our support more than ever. Um, you know, that's the group that when it comes to the public, um, I will say this, I've, I've said this to one of my friends who is a, uh, um, who's an officer. And uh, uh, I said, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, and, and Marcus Atrell said it, our, our Navy SEAL friend, uh, a good buddy of ours said it a uh, long time ago that, you know, for everyone that complains, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of other people that, that really care and love our police department, our, our police officers, our law enforcement community, uh, not just when the wolf's knocking on the door, but, but all the time they appreciate what they do. So um, if you get a chance, uh, thank one of them uh, for what they do. Uh, I just didn't want to let that slide by, uh, you know, today before we got things rolling. Um, the other thing I want to mention before we go on, we promised Chief Bobby Halton and, and Diane Rothschild from uh, and Ginger from Fire Engineering FDIC. The FDIC call for papers is out. Um, so if you're interested, if you're if you want to teach again, if you've taught there before, you taught there last year, or whatever. Um, uh, if you're looking to, you know, teach for the first time there, uh, the deadline is June fifteenth. So so don't wait. Uh, get your stuff submitted now. Um, I had somebody ask me this morning you know, what would be some of the tips on submitting a class? So one is it really shouldn't be the first time you're teaching at a major conference. I'm just going to say, and that's just my advice. Um, uh, it, you know, unless you've got something, your department experienced, uh, you know, uh, tragedy, uh, 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 it's a case study or something along those lines. But if you're teaching on a particular topic, uh, FD High C, the, the biggest conference in the world, uh, should really be the, the first time you're you're running it out there. Um, get some practice and teach locally. Teach at some conferences in your area. Big thing, write an article for fire engineering. Um, I know we all look for that. Uh, those of us on the advisory board look for that uh, in your submittal that when you say this is based on or part of it's based on an article I did that was published in fire engineering, fire apparatus, gems, something along those lines, um, uh, firefighter nation, um, when, when it comes along that. So that gives us something, you know, a little bit of a baseline uh, when it comes to this. So make sure, you know, you, you, you've got your you got your uh, background put in there, your bio is in there, it's accurate, um, nothing made up or anything like that. Um, but it, it's an incredible conference. If you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, if you get a chance, submit. On the other hand, if you don't get picked, um, don't give up and, and, and don't, you know, get angry. It, it, there's, you know, I, I don't know how Bobby and Diane and Ginger do it. There's so many, I mean, God, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and then some of classes that are submitted and there's only so many classroom spots available and different tracks they have to fill um i know the advisory board does our part when it comes to evaluating but i've always said i can't imagine when it comes to uh picking and choosing especially you know bobby's the boss and he'll he'll take the hit on it you know when people get upset and i'm like you know worst thing you do is get upset and post stuff that you're mad don't do that you know what i'm saying just Go ahead, try it again. Keep putting in there. Sometimes, you know, three times is a charm. Another part of that is make sure that somebody else isn't teaching the same program. It's like when people submit an article, and you know, I'll encourage them sometimes, you know, you really need to go read the magazine or go to Firefighter Nation or fireengineering.com and, and, you know, see if anybody's written or published, you know, the same thing you're looking to do. Um, you know, it could be a great idea, but if it's the same format, the same information, you know, especially when you have competing 
spaces and things like that, you know, think about what you're doing and, and give it some good thought. Again, FDIC is incredible. Just put in, put in, try, try, try. Um, I've seen some people that are, you know, they've been there for years now that never thought they would get their class accepted and, and they're incredible. Don't sell yourself short. A good friend of mine once said, nah, nobody wants to hear from you. I'm from a smaller department, a smaller community. FDIC represents the entire fire service, not the big metro departments, not just career, not just volunteer, not just part-time, not just, they represent everybody worldwide, but they represent, you know, it's FDIC International, they represent everybody. So don't sell yourself short. There's a lot of folks out there, you know, from a smaller department, if you will, it's not any less dangerous. We've already talked about that on the show before, but uh, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? If you've got a great topic, a good topic to talk about, um, you know, submit it and and, and and hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed and we'll, we'll get there. Um, the other thing I want to mention is um, uh, a couple of people asked this morning, we posted that we're going to be doing this uh, show. Um, if you're looking for any of the classes that we're doing, myself, Chief Salka, or any of the group here, um, I know I post them on my website at prideownership.com. Uh, if you're looking for any of our company officer academies, just look for those on there. We list them by state. If they're open to the general population, sometimes certain, some departments want to keep it in-house um, and focus on their folks, and I understand that. That's cool. Uh, so we post the ones that are open to the public there um, with, the, with the contact information for you to take care of things. So um, one, of the, one of the things we want to do with, with, with today's show is if you've been following this on our Hump Day Hangouts, a while back um, we had – uh, Chief John Ashman, Jeremy, Terry, some guys. We talked about, for the guys from Louisville, Texas, about the process, you know, the beginning steps of specking apparatus and what you look for. And, and, you know, emphasis was on talking to the troops, making sure that you talk to your people. Um, you know, I know I see it when I travel. Uh, I'll ask about a particular compartment or how a rig is set up, and my, my question will be, you know, so who spec this rig? And they'll say the chief. And my next question is, when's the last time the chief rode the rig, you know, rode an engine? Now, I understand if you're a boss that in some places, that's what you have to do. That, you know, a lot of some of the small organizations that the chief is probably the most dialed in. Um, on the other hand, if you have people that you can hand things off to or you can form a committee, um, almost 12 years in Louisville, Texas, John Ashman was a captain. He's a battalion chief of training. Uh, now, John spent millions and millions and millions of dollars on apparatus. The only thing I ever asked was maybe add some lighting, warning lights this way, or do this. But, you know, emphasis always was um, talking to the people. You know, the guys and gals that ride the rigs, the guys and gals that are out there every day checking them, getting up in them, driving to and from emergencies, you know, doing the maintenance, all the different things on them. Talk to them and see what they're looking for. Now, you know, obviously, like when you're building a firehouse, um, we're not always able to give them everything they need, okay? Sometimes a great idea is it in the budget. Um, sometimes it doesn't fit into what we're trying to do um, and how we're trying to do it. Same thing with a piece of apparatus, um, you know, is, is asking the troops, whether it's a step or it's um, uh, how we end up starting the whole design process and so on and so forth, um, that's all huge uh, when it comes to doing this. The other thing is talk to your mechanics, talk to your shops, okay? So there's Terry. To the people that uh, work on the rigs, to the people that uh, 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 do the maintenance, uh, those in the shops and everything else, talk to them. You know, I, I, again, a lot those turning the wrenches, those doing everything else, you know, it's always nice to have them uh, in the process as well. Um, so that's the first step. And that was one of the things we talked about with the first hump day hangout we did, you know, months and months ago, not that long, but long enough about the first, the beginning process of, of take care of that. Then recently we had, uh, Bill, Bill Peters from fire engineering, uh, fire apparatus, uh, retired battalion chief over apparatus, Jersey city. We had Ricky Riley, chief Ricky Riley, who does phenomenal things on the East coast at, at all over the country, uh, the president of traditions training. But when it comes to, you know, take care and ordering and specking apparatus. And then we had Chris McLuhan from fire apparatus magazine and, and, and uh, the website, uh, not just fire apparatus. That's one of the things we talked about that magazine, that site is everything that goes in a firehouse, everything that goes on a, in, in a rig and the design of all of them. It's, it's not just, 
pumpers and ladder trucks. It's firehouses and everything goes inside. It's pretty cool. Check it out if you have a chance. So we talked with them about, okay, here we are. Let's talk standards. Let's talk what we're trying to do to be clean cabs and everything else. So what we wanted to do today is, and you saw my co-host, uh, Terry McGrath, join us. Um, uh, we, had to, we had to move. To, we were going to try this from Pierce and due to some technical issues there, we couldn't get it done. Uh, what we want to talk to you about today is, you know, just our topic was, uh, if you saw a post, it was your new rig, uh, design to delivery, from design to delivery, and some of the things that we look at when it comes to uh, making this all happen. Terry, are you by yourself or the other guys not going to be able to join you? Yeah. So can you hear me? Yeah, I've got you. Great. You're good. Okay. Sorry about that. So no, I had to, I had to, there, my apologies. We had this all set up. They're on the floor right now working uh, with a couple of engineers on some issues. So uh, when we couldn't get the connection to work, uh, my ho the hotel's about a, a mile from the plant. So I ran back to the hotel. I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave you uh, hanging and, and trying to, to just, uh, uh, you know, tap dance for an hour alone. So uh, I ran back here to try to get a connection. So if we're on, then uh, then I, my fingers are crossed. This will work. But but no, my apologies. So it's, it's no, no, we're good. We're good. Terry it happens. I, I've, you know, I've had my issues on my end. Um, and, and again, you know, Terry, you're, you're, you're an intricate part of of things going on in Louisville when it comes to ordering apparatus and overseeing the committees. And you've got some great people, first of all, and I, I started off um, and I know, you know, you come from a law enforcement background as well, besides the fire service, we threw a shout out being at national police week to those in our law enforcement family uh, to not forget them and to show them a little more support. Um, I, I, you caught me at the tail end. There. I was talking about when we did our first hump day hangout, you know, with, with, uh, you know, John and Jeremy and all the guys back then talk about the, okay, this is what we talk to the guys, talk to your shops, all those things. And then the one show, I think you may have been out of town when I had Bill Peters, Chris McCoon, and Ricky Riley on, and we were talking about everything from addressing all the new needs and unfunded mandates like clean cabs and all this different stuff, so on and so forth. And then you and I talked about this particular topic of Great questions this morning from a couple of folks. Um, uh, you know, I guess the first thing, T, is talk about how important it is, and that's where I kind of was, I was at when you walked in, is having the right committee, having the right people. You know, it's like when we started, you remember this, you were part of the original band, the Pipes and Drums Band of Louisville. Everybody wanted to be a bagpiper until they realized how hard it is to play the damn instrument, that you're not, you're not, it's not a, you know, it's not a clarinet. You're blown into a bag. <laughs> And then trying to squeeze the thing. And, and all of a sudden, it's like, well, all the people want to do it, don't want to do it. Same thing with this. Everybody wants to get involved. But how important is it to have people like John Ashman and Jeremy Jones and those guys who are obviously really, we know John is, and now Jeremy. How important is it to have those kind of people on your committee? Yeah, so I we're incredibly blessed for a couple of, a couple of different things. So first of all, you know, chief, and you, you talk to this a lot is the passion. So these, these two guys in particular, um, are, are just absolutely dedicated and all in on, on this experience and making sure that, that what we bring back to Louisville is, is absolutely the best functioning, uh, the best value, uh, and, and, and every piece of equipment that, that they've had a hand in and brought back, has been second to none. And so, so for starters, those two guys, I, I, my, my, my hats off to both of them. They put in a tremendous amount of time, uh, at home and at work. Um, and they, uh, you know, they're, they're incredibly dedicated to what they're doing, but they're the fact that they, um, they take ownership in, in everything that they, they spec out and build and the partnership that they have with, with the uh, with Pierce and Siddons Martin for what we're doing, so uh, we can't be more uh, more blessed really in Louisville to have those two guys. And then they've they've brought in a couple of others. Uh, Taryn Moore's part of the committee. Shane Simmons is part of the committee. Um, and two so good, two good guys. Yeah, yeah. And and again, um, those guys. It's not a. You know, it, it, we're blessed, and I think this speaks to the quality and to the success that we have. In that, um, it's not 
they don't just turn the switch and say, hey, it's time to order a pumper. Uh, they work on this constantly um, and they're constantly evaluating the, the fleet that we have back in, in Louisville. They're always looking at those uh, pieces of equipment to see what's working, what, what ideas that were brought in maybe on a, on a particular build and did it work. And then, and they don't do it just within the committee uh, themselves because they're always incorporating the ideas of, of the guys that are riding those rigs. And I, and I think that it's a, it's a, it's a process that never stops. And you know, this and anybody that's been involved in this knows that, and it shouldn't be, it's not a, it's not a, a process where we, we say, well, we're going to order a pumper. So we go through the specs, we order the pumper, we build the pumper, we bring the, the, the equipment back. Um, they're always going back and reevaluating for the next one. And, uh, and so it's, this has been a really, really interesting. So uh, unfortunately we were set up to, to show you our, our, we've got a mid-mount pumper that's sitting on the blue floor there. And this is going to be the third Pierce, uh, mid-mount that we have. Uh, and this one, we've got a 2014, a 2018, this one's a 2019 and there's a lot of differences. And, and I think that some people don't realize how much changes in these things, but the technology changes, the standards, the NFPA standards yeah. change. Um, so all of those things and, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, Captain Ashman, or uh, sorry, Chief Ashman and uh, Captain Jones, um, they, are, they are just on top of it and, and it's been fun. Well, Terry, you mentioned the, you know, the standards, the NFPA, uh, and they do. They do a great job. Um, a lot of times, they're forced into revising standards, anything the standards, because of things that happen out there. And I don't mean that they say forced in a bad way. It's just that changes. You know, things happen, like you said. And uh, <clears throat> they, I think they do a pretty good job of laying it out. But that is a living, breathing, pulsing with blood document. The NPA. It's not just something that is sitting on a shelf somewhere and every 10 years they go, time to revise them. They're changing those things, like you said, all the time. Um, you know, and, and again, right now they're dealing with all these different concepts about, you know, with, with clean cabs and so on, so, you know, all these different things like that. But you mentioned something about having the right people that, you know, the, the ownership and that in the committee. Um, and, and I mentioned about how important it is to have those that turn the wrenches, those that work on the rigs involved as well. Um, you know, as much as the guys that are riding it need to be able to have their input that that step sucks. I can't, that, that step right there doesn't work or where that compartment set up is, you know, looks great right now, but when I'm pumping, I've got lines off and discharge on the side, that compartment's useless because I can't get to it now with that, you know, kind of like, you know, a lot of, uh, of building, you know, departments, they go, well, the street's wide enough for your ladder truck. Yeah. But when I get there, I have to set these outriggers out. And I need room. Oh, same, same. You know, when I charge all these lines, if I charge anything other than the cross lays off the top or, you know, the chute, that I, I've got lines. You know, so I told you we had the, the one, I saw this area ladder. I won't say where. It was a big, big, big city. Uh, the wrong person specking the rigs. <clears throat> and the, the ladders, to keep them from all the snow and rock salt and all the dirt, you know, grime getting on them, they were in pockets. You know, so you had solid panels down the side. The problem was you had to slide the ladders out the front. Well, in order to do that, you had to pull the mirrors in each time you slid the ladders out. You know, it, it was just a very poor design. You know, so, first of all, some of the apparatus place should have should have caught that as well. Um, uh, you know, and, and you're you're fortunate. You're at Pierce. There's and, and folks, we're not just picking one over the other. That's the one that Lewis was working with. There's other great brands, great manufacturers out there. This is just the one that they're going with. They went with for for several years now, for years and years now. When I was there, um, with their tower ladders and with their engines and with everything they're doing there, um, but having the right people involved, like you said, you've got guys that are so passionate about the fire service. Uh, you know, John Ashman, Chief John Ashman, when it comes to training, you know, when it comes to apparatus, it comes to hydraulics and pump classes and the rigs. You know, an old pencil, old Pennsylvania boy. Um, you know, he just, he loves it. And they have Captain Jones, Captain Jerry, Jeremy Jones involved. And then you got Terry Moore and Shane Simmons. 
that that's kind of like an all-star team. There are people who truly do care. Um, Terry, you've also got some pretty good bosses at City Hall um, that that are very good. You know, budgets are budgets, and I know that's your baby. You know, on the side of the wall you're on as an assistant chief when it comes to the budget process and all that. Uh, but but with Donna Barron, the city manager, before that, Claude King, you know, the vehicle replacement program, and you're pretty fortunate to have a program that's funded well, but to have some support from City Hall. I know when you and I were there working together, you know, if it was within reason, within budget, they're like, hey, if this makes it better for the people riding it, for the guys and gals riding it, then we'll find a way. And so you've been very fortunate that way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and absolutely blessed. So, you know, I, I kind of think that, you know, in, in this particular program and what we're doing today, um, but, you know, I want to talk just a minute about the process in general. So um, we, we have in, in the city of Louisville, we operate off of a, re, a replacement program in that we make internal payments into a fund. It's so like an we, internal lease program, right? Correct. Correct. So, and there's, you know, there's, there's a million different ways to buy apparatus and this is just something that, that Louisville uh, does. And so I can speak from that, but, but we make internal payments or lease payments to ourselves so that when we're ready to buy, uh, we're, we're, we're funded, we're well-funded and then we've got to kind of sit down and, and make it all work. So, and that, that's what, that's what has worked for us. And that's, that's how this uh, particular uh, system that, that Louisville operates in. Um, and so when we get to, uh, you know, we, we design them, we spec them, we work with, uh, our vendors, whoever they're going to be. And in this particular case, it's, it's, it's Pierce is the ultimate product. It's bought through, uh, Siddons Martin. Uh, and we've got a great, we've had Pat Siddons on here. It's been a great partnership for us. And, um, and, and I, I urge anyone who's listening to this, and it, it, in your particular case, it may not be Siddons Martin. It may not be Pierce. It, there's a there's a lot of different choices out there, but you know, first of all, do your homework. Uh, pick pick some really talented people and some people that are committed to making this this uh, this whole uh, process work. Um, and and that's what we've that's what we've done. And so, um, you know, for, for us, um, again, I my job with the fire department is I'm kind of quote unquote over these guys. I don't think I'm over them in any way. I'm fortunate that uh, they kind of let me tag along, <laughs> but we, we entrust them. And, and that's it. And I, you know, I, I wish this had all worked like we planned because well, we'll, do, we'll be, do it again. We'll do it yeah. again. And, and, and they were going to be sitting, we're going to be sitting right there by the, by the apparel. We've got three pieces of equipment up here at Pierce that they're working on currently. Uh, so a truck and two engines, but, um, but with that being said, um, I'm fortunate in, in my position that they let me come along sometimes. Uh, and, and I probably, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think I slow them down too much, but, um, but they really do allow me the opportunity to come in here and, and, and it helps because if I have to go back and ask, uh, my bosses, uh, but I can speak from uh, a little bit of, of uh, education, a little bit of experience and, and having the opportunity to come up here. And, I, and I'll tell you something else, Chief, and, and you know, you understand what I'm talking, and, and I, I say this to anybody else. The ability to, to go through this process. So uh, yesterday, we talked, uh, you know, I, I spent probably two hours with, with uh, Jimmy Faulkner from Dallas Fire Department. They're up here uh, working, uh, working on a, a couple of pieces of equipment. But there was, a, you know, Round Rock Fire Department. There was a Prosper Fire Department. There was, so not just within the state of Texas, but from all over the country. And, and the process of being able to sit with other people and talk shop and it's like FDIC or it's like, uh, you know, any process. And it is incredibly valuable. Terry, to, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of anybody bringing a mayor or city manager up there? I, I, I have um, to witness, you know, you know, I mean, it's one thing for you know, so many of them, and it's gotta be hard 
you know, writing a one point three million dollar check for a tower ladder that you're like, God, that, that's a lot of money to put into something with rubber tires on it. We all know why, but have you? I mean, I've heard of it. I don't know if you have. Where we've had people bring their bosses, you know, to the plant to show them the process, to show them everything. And you, you talk about educating like yourself so you could go back and be better when it comes to educating your bosses. I don't know if you've seen it or heard of it, but I, I, I had a buddy of mine. He brought up his city manager and said, oh, my God, for 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 him to be able to see. And like you said, Terry, it's not just Louisville. It's not just Texas. It's all over. And, the, and you have every – stage in apparatus you have design you have stuff that's on boards that's not even they haven't even they haven't turned a wrench yet to frames to you you can see everything from start to finish you know I, i'm just saying I, I don't know why more people don't try and, and and pull that off what an opportunity to show the boss the big boss hey look you know the one that's writing the checks this is what we go through. This is this is the process. I mean, I don't know if you've seen it up there. I have, and I, I thought it was incredible that this guy did it, pulled it off. I, I I know some people may not get along with their boss that well, but unfortunately, that's a bad thing. But um, you know, what an opportunity again to educate them on where the money's going. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, we 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 saw it uh, today, and and walking up and down this blue floor. Uh, you know, there's about nine, nine different rigs that are sitting there, uh, you know, with, with, with the, this, this, the committees from the different departments, but yeah, I've seen that up here. Uh, and I think that's a, an incredibly valuable, um, thing and, and, and it, it, it really, really helps. Uh, and I would encourage anyone to, you know, I, you know, it's funny, chief, I think sometimes we're our own worst enemy in that, you know, you, you get this process, something that works. And so you're, you know, you're, you, you know, you kind of, you don't want to share it with, you know, or, or let the secret out of the bag of what you're doing, but it's, it's incredibly valuable to be able to have those kind of resources. So, so you bring or invite or share that, that experience with, uh, with your, your governing body, with, with your, you know, uh, whether that's your city manager, whether that's your purchasing people, whether that's your uh, elected officials. And man, if they're willing to do it, uh, absolutely, by all means, uh, bring them in because this is an incredibly complex, difficult, long process to, to, to spec a piece of equipment out and then go through the process of building it and buying it. Uh, and, and yeah, absolutely. So today, uh, you know, the, the plant obviously is busy like all of them are. And again, we're, we're not, I'm not endorsing one versus the other. I'm just simply saying yeah. that no matter what you do, no matter what piece of equipment, uh, you buy and whether that's, you know, uh, Pierce or Sutfin or, or Crimson, or, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of them out there, but, uh, it, the, the, the process is incredibly complex and it should be, and you should, you should uh, talk to a lot of different people and, and compare notes, talk to other firefighters, other agencies, uh, engineers. Well, and, and Terry, while you're talking about that, you know, cause we, you know, you and I, you came up with the actual title for today's program about from design, you know, the new rig, your new rig, the design and delivery. You know, we, we, you and I have talked about this before, and I talked with Bill Peters, Chris McLuhan, and Ricky Riley about specking rigs to meet your actual needs. You know, and that's, you know, that's like the whole, the tiller concept, you know, people are like, ah, oh, what well, your tillers, people just want to have. I'm like, no, you know what? And, and you on the east side, Castle Hills, my concern was, was, you know, turning radio, you know, when you're building these imitation brownstones or whatever, or whatever with the taxpayer was on the first floor, the businesses and two and three and four, you know, four story high buildings with apartments or condos on top. And now you're trying to muscle this mid mount or this tower ladder around where there's cars parked out there. You know, a lot of people are moving back to tillers and different things. You know, some people don't want, you know, the mid mouse, they don't, you know, they want their guys jumping up and down, but then people will say, look, I can see my guys on both sides, on both sides of the street. Um, 
you know, if I'm up, you know, top side, you know, top top mounted pump panel. I mean, how important is it? And I know in, in your organization, what you see there to spec rigs for what you actually need tactically and how you run. You know, I, I've said for years, when it comes to fighting fires, pumpers, the most important thing on pumpers is water and hose. And that's what used to be on a long time ago when they, you know, they, they used to actually pull a hose tether behind the steamer, you know, um, you, you know, water, water and hose, everything we put on our, Afterwards is all extra shit stuff that, you know, EMS, everything else we do. But, you know, specking it for what you actually need is huge. I think this goes back to what you said earlier about having the right committee with the right ownership, you know, from cradle to grave, if you will, from the beginning of the process, people that actually ride the rigs, people that talk to the, the guys and gals that do, you know, specking, again, that piece of that brass for what you actually need is huge. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. And, uh, and, and, you know, it, I think that, uh, that, um, you know, the, it, in our particular case is finding, and, and we, we spend a lot of time and, and I, I think there's a lot of value in it, but we spend a lot of time trying to find the right people and, by, and, and by the right people, uh, and, and, you know, I talked to, to Chief Ashman and, and Captain Jones a lot about this is that, um, when you bring people into the mix, when you bring people into the process of, um, of, of going through this, you know, design to delivery, uh, like we have, but there's a tremendous amount of value in finding, you know, finding the right people and, and bringing them into, uh, the, uh, the process so that it works. And so uh, we certainly spent a lot of time doing that. And I think that uh, my experience, uh, certainly in this process and, and, and talking to different uh, organizations is that um, there's a, you've got a, you've got a lot at stake here. Uh, there's a lot at stake because, right. So you buy a, um, you, you buy a $1.3 million platform or a tiller or whatever it is you're doing, but you're going to have it for a long time. And so you've got to find the right people. You got to find uh, the, the opportunity to uh, bring all these people together, but they, it has to work. Well, Terry, you remember you were working there and I, I won't talk about the particular brand, uh, you know, and I, I always like, I know there are some issues, you know, in the past with certain certain manufacturers with certain things or whatever. I've told people before a couple of things. One is don't blame the apparatus manufacturer when you get the rig home, it doesn't fit in your firehouse. Okay. Or when you back it in and when you pull it out to go to a call and your your the rear end of your ladder truck when it crosses the concrete pumps and you tear it, you hit and you smash in your overhead, you know, your overhead uh, doors, don't blame them because you mismeasured something, you know, and ordered something like that. Um, so when it doesn't actually fit in the firehouse, but we had two quits. You remember they were, they were just a couple years old. They were in the shops more than they were. I mean, there was nothing more embarrassing than the advertisement if you remember for the towing company with their tractor trailer flatbed, their whole advertising, their business card, their website, and their flyers they put out was our rig, our quint on top of their tow truck. I'm like, really? You got to rub it in. Um, you know, there was obviously several things that were missed back then, um, fitting in the station. But you've been talking about the blue, the on the blue floor. The floor. We, we talked initially about how important it is to start the beginning process and spec them what you need, the input to committee. Before we get to the end, because we're talking from, you know, design to delivery, you said this before, and not everybody takes advantage of it, the, the mid point, the mid inspection. You know, like so many people, Terry, they do the initial one, they go out to blah, blah, and then they come back and they pick it up, they do their final. Right. And all of a sudden you kind of stuck with some things you signed off on or whatever that they can't actually change, you know, or would cost a lot more money. How important is it to have that, that mid inspection? Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, the, uh, the, um, in, in, in today, uh, you know, we're, we're looking at a, a truck that we built. And so we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna look at it on the blue floor, but we've also got two engines that are at, at mid. 
And so well, real quick, what's the blue, what's the blue floor? So yeah, it's our, so our viewers. In this particular case, the blue floor for, for Pierce is that when they're done, those particular uh, piece of equipment are all lined up and, and we're going to go out and, and, and look at those pieces of equipment. Um, and so for us and, and incredibly valuable is that we're going to have the opportunity to walk out there and we look at, you know, in, in our case, uh, our uh, mid mount is on that, that floor. And so we're going to go out there and we're going to inspect it. But uh, it's, it's incredibly, um, uh, it's a, it's a busy place and it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, it's, it's just, um, we're going to go out there and we're going to have the opportunity to, uh, look at everything we've done, but we're going to look at, uh, and, and inspect it. We're going to take the, the written specifications and we're going to make sure that it came out the way that, that it was, it was designed and spec'd. And then, uh, so, there are a lot of people that or a lot of agencies that don't do their homework and 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 it's and it's it, it's an incredibly um difficult time and a difficult uh experience in that um and and in our particular case um, it's nice that, uh, we had the opportunity to look at the apparatus, look at the specs, but have the opportunity to talk to a lot of different people and, and really do your homework. Well, so the blue floor is more or less at, at Pierce for our, for our viewers. This is where you kind of doing your final, you know, for the most part. Now walk us back to that whole, that whole that minutes, but I guess maybe it's a budget thing at the very beginning because everything costs money. But why do you think some folks don't take advantage of that midway inspection? You know, how, and the importance of it. Yeah. So I, you know, I can't, I couldn't speak for them, but you know, the interesting thing um, in, in this particular case is that from when, when we design it, uh, and, and so getting back to um, we, someone sits down and, and puts it all together, but the, the truly the nice thing about it is, is that you can sit around and talk about. So today, and I, I was, I was my, my goal was we were gonna kind of talk and, and, and show, have the opportunity to show everybody and, and, and we were not able to, but anyway, what 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 we're doing is we're today we're we sit around a table in the on the blue floor which is a it's a it's a bay it's a giant it's like it's like it is like the bay at your station where your rig sits and so but while we're doing that because our rig is is you know basically done but there's also a bunch of people sitting on the other side of the bay and they're at the beginning. So that's what it's all about. And so, and to your point is that blue floor has, um, it, you know, it, it's got a, a, for lack of a better description, the finished process or the finished uh, rig. But then at the same time, I can turn around and walk into the building, walk right from the bay and turn around and there's people sitting around a conference room uh, five feet away who are building an apparatus. And so, and, and they're and able to see all the different stages and, it, and maybe they look, they walk out, they see the Louisville rig or the Dallas rig or prosper go, Oh, I didn't think, why did you guys put that? You know, a lot of great conversations. Right. Are, like you said, talk, sit around, talk and shop, but yeah. you know, why did you guys do that? Well, we found that this worked better. And you look at your committee and go, God, we didn't think of that. Something to put down for next time or whatever. You know, there's a lot of transfer of information going on there that that's, that's, you know, just looking at your guys' rig, you guys have done it. You look at other people's stuff and went, you know, we saw a rig up there. They had this, we, we need to talk to the guys and gals and see if that's something they want. I mean, that's pretty important. Yeah. 
And, and, you know, for the, for the, the, the salespeople is that, you know, we sit there in that room and talk about, um, you know, we say, well, you know, we'd like to put, um, you know, we'd like to put a pike pole and we want to try to put it here. And so someone sits there and says, yeah, either it works or it doesn't work. And, or, but the, the beauty of it is, is that then you turn around and, and at some point in time, you know, it's, it's from, from the design to the delivery is the, the nice part about it is, is that someone can, you know, when you have an idea and they turn around and they say, Hey, that doesn't work. And let me tell you why it doesn't work or it does work. But the true art of it is, is they to say, well, I tell you what, let's go out inside and take a look. And so then all of a sudden you're sitting there and it doesn't make sense. And then they say, well, I tell you what, let's walk over here. And so then you turn around, you walk, you know, out of a room into a hallway and all of a sudden you're in a, you're in a place where they're actually building it or, you know, Hey, here's a, here's a, here's a nice thing. Here's an engineer. Let's go talk to the engineers. And, and let's say, uh, you know, this is what we're doing. And then, and then you get them involved. And so it's a, it's an incredibly complex, but it's incredibly rewarding process. And you really do have the opportunity to see it from design to delivery and and that's incredibly incredibly important uh when you're building very complex and and very expensive equipment so well and there's enough and, and there's resources um that are available to you you know there's people you could talk to obviously the, the apparatus manufacturers and those and there's a lot of good folks that do that you were just with one of my guys where i was interim chief of trophy club Brian Peters is a sales rep on his days off for, for Pierce, uh, for Sins Martin. And he loves what he does. He's very passionate about it. He's, he loves, he, I would talk to him once about the excitement of sitting with someone who's thinking about a rig, going through the bidding process, being awarded the bid, then sitting with their committee. And like everything you've been talking about so far, going through the whole process. And the day they pick that rig up, the day they put it in service and, for so many of us that do the wedding now ceremony, it's like, that's why I think that ceremony is like, that's, that's the cherry on top of the gigantic big cake, being able to, the tradition of putting the rig in service, you know, pushing it in all the things that we do, changing out the bells like you do um, with the, you know, if the, if the, the captain that rode the rig last is available, having them change out the bell, just so many things that are important because it's not, we're not just buying another car for our rental car agency we're buying something for the community. You mentioned this earlier. You know, I, I talk about often the whole, you know, a lot of guys I said it to them, the whole Kurt Vonnegut, you know, poem about the fire engine. I can think of no more stirring a symbol of man's humanity, the man, than that of a fire engine and what it means to little kids, to people, to a community. So th there needs to be that investment, but they're all, you know, there's plenty of people out there. Um, and I want to mention this before we get too far down the road here. Terry is too far down the road. You like that? Um, is uh, all the more important. Yeah, you see it. We go to conferences all the time. Uh, my my good buddy Joe Kitchen from Ohio is 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 dialed in and watching us. Ohio State Fire Chiefs conference. I taught there, and and the, the parking lot at the the conference there, the hotel was littered with all types of apparatus. I was just in Palestine, Texas. For, I did a day, I did a day with their people on leadership. Then I, we did a day of pride over over everybody. And they had the parking lot loaded with apparatus. And I always tell people, don't just walk around and go, wow, that you go out and talk to people, go out, open doors, open compartments. Here's your chance. That you know, I know it's fun to go to the conferences and buy the t-shirts and the challenge coins and everything, but oh my God, you've you've got the rig, you've got the thing. You, they brought the car lot to you. You know, take that opportunity to look at the rigs and talk to the people, you know. Um ask questions because the resources Terry are there for us. I just see so many folks kind of just meander, walk around, they kind of walk past all the apparatus trying to get to where they're giving away, you know, free art sticks and pens and stuff like that. Instead of, you know, taking a look at, you know, you know, looking for their particular manufacturer or 
the three they're interested in or whatever and going and looking at the rigs and seeing what people have done. Um, you know, you'll see, you'll see like, you know, the, the Cadillac Escalade of fire engines and you'll see something that's not quite that big a budget for those that don't have money and go, you know what, they both work. You know, it goes back to your needs as to what do you have budget wise, um, you know, when it comes to that. Um, talk, you know, before we, we only have so much time today, but the testing at Pierce, you mentioned this before. For the we know for the pumpers and everything else, what do you what are they gonna be doing testing wise for the mid mount tower ladder there? Because I just think their facility, just like Ferrari, just like all of them, there's so many great facilities out there, so many great manufacturers. We're just talking about the one you're visiting today. The testing they do of the apparatus isn't just let's throw some hard suction and let's do a pump test. It's absolutely amazing what they do with pumpers and with ladder trucks. Yeah, yeah. So uh, today, um, you know, for this this particular uh, build, but they'll take it out, right? And so they're gonna they're gonna test it, they're gonna pump it, and they're gonna they're gonna, and 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 it's an opportunity to, um, you know allow um the thing to be run through its paces so in in uh and and they're probably starting that right now before you bring it home yeah so uh you know chief ashman is going to go out there and they're going to drive it they're gonna they're gonna raise it they're gonna they're gonna take that uh while i was while we were doing our thing today looking at you know it's not just a matter to say well is the paint right and is it is it does it have any scratches or problems but while you're doing that uh you know we're looking out and across the way someone's raising the ladder and so they are and and they're gonna they're gonna raise it up move it around and and so it's an actual you know an actual physical test uh and and you you put it through its paces um you know it, they they take it out and they stick uh, you know they take that engine out and they run it through its paces and you know just like just like every single day when you show up to work when anyone shows up to work and but they pump it and they 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 raise it or put it at an angle or but you absolutely um, make sure it works. And so, and, and that's what will take place today. And, and, and it's, it's truly, truly a fascinating, um, uh, you know, uh, process. Um, and it's, it's, it's the chance for, you know, everyone to put it through its paces and, uh, and that's what will take place today. And that's what, that's what, th that's what they are doing um, and so in this particular case, they're going to go out and they're going to take the engine or the truck and they're going to leave, they're going to drive it around. They're going to, and so it's, uh, you know, I, I wish I had the opportunity to, 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 that we, uh, had the opportunity to kind of put, put, put that through, uh, it's paces, but. Well, you know, we'll talk about that again, you know, at another show because this is just one of, I mean, especially nowadays, Terry, with everything that's going into apparatus with the standards. But now, you know, the challenge we talked before about clean cabs and all this stuff, which is, I think it's the, I, I said it last last show, it's the snowball rolling down the hill that turns into a big gigantic ball. But it, as it rolls down, it rolls up the other hill and it becomes, we're going, we went from this to this and we'll get back about here. You know, there's a lot of challenges to make all that happen. Um, not everybody lives in Texas where you can peel your, your gear off, be all sweaty with no shoes, you know, jump back on a rig and drive back while your stuff's in a bag. Try to do that in the snow, you know, when it's, you know, 20 degrees outside or when it's cold or whatever. So there's a lot of challenges, you know, when it comes to that. I think part of that, Terry, is – is um, and we've talked about regardless of manufacturers, you know, years ago, you're, you're paramedic a long, long time. You know, we saw the ambulances go, the ambulances went through the phase of let's build really fancy ambulances with fancy seats and all this stuff. And then we said, well, now we can't wash blood and all this other stuff, blow more pathogens out of it, stuff like that. 
So now they got back to making ambulances that have not permeable sur you know, surfaces, things you can take your cleaner to your bleach, whatever, and clean the whole back of the rig out. And it used to be that way with engines where, you know, you could, you could wash out the floor, you could wipe down the seats, you could do everything. And then we got a little fancy with, you know, embroidered seats and all the different things. And now we're, now we're at this point with clean cabs. It's like, okay, now what do we do, you know, when it comes to keeping that stuff clean and, you know, when it's not absorbing, to, you know, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think those are some of the challenges I think you can see, you know, in the future, it, just like seatbelts. You and I have talked about it. You and I could drive the Six Flags in Arlington. You and I could get on the Superman or Mr. Freeze or Batman, where the hell those rides are. You know, you sit down and this the cage, right? It goes doof or it goes doof. And off you go, forwards, backwards, upside at 150 miles an hour. Yet, yet we still are trying to, to okay, put your seatbelt into this buckle. You, you know what I'm saying? They have extenders. They, they're the big, giant seatbelts. Now, they're, we're finally getting to the point where we're getting stuff built that work for firefighters. And we really, really want to address. And I'll tell you, you and I have talked about this. If you tell, right, if you tell the manufacturers what you want, you know, with, with, with a few exceptions where it just won't work, like we said, they'll make it. If you tell them, I want a, I want a seat belt that the guys could put on with a gloved hand. I don't want this thing that is the same size as the air pack straps. You know, okay, we'll put the little extenders. I want something that they can put on that's going to restrain them. Or I want lights on 45-degree angles on, on the back, up and down. So when we turn the rig at an, at, at an MVA, at an accident, we, you know, we don't lose our lumen shooting out the back. We've got lights you know, on the side. So we're, you know, if you tell them, and that's what Lewis has done. We've told them, look, we want this done this way. And they went, okay, well, let's see if we can make that happen. And nine times out of 10, they do. But if you don't tell them T, right, if you don't tell them, this is what we need, you know, they're, they're going to do their best they can to put a good product in front of you. And that's their job. Um, not necessarily oversell something, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, a good product. And, you know, this is where we need to be a little bit more vocal and, and I know John Ashman, I know Jeremy, I know Shane and Taryn, but I remember when you used to bring Edgar up there. I mean, when they get, when they, when your guys get on creepers and they're underneath the rigs and they're rolling around, they're looking at everything. Um, not that any manufacturer is trying to cheat you or screw you. Hey, things happen. Things, you know, if you don't check it, hell of a time to find out is after they bring the thing to your firehouse. And now you're, you know, it's how to tell that to your boss. Hey, that $1.3 million tower ladder is in the shops already because this wasn't done right or whatever, right? Right, right. And so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an incredibly difficult uh, process, and it's incredibly expensive. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's exactly what, uh, you know, it, it, you can't, you can't, um, well, I mean, I guess some people do, and so it's it's an incredibly uh, difficult thing to uh, to do and and to get to. Uh, uh, so, hang on, hang on, Chief. <laughs> Terry, but Terry ordered a pizza. Yeah. Oh. So. No, I got and I got you, and you know, and, and that whole thing, like again, going from design to delivery and. Like we mentioned earlier, I mentioned before you, you, you jumped on T, is, you know, we did the show a while back with you and your guys and talked about the whole design process and seeking input and those things and that. And then we had the show a few months, a couple months ago with, let's talk about addressing the needs and the unfunded mandates and the standards and all that different stuff, inspecting rigs the right way you can. And, and now we're at this point where, you know, you guys are there doing, you know, doing and it's the final on a tower ladder, right? Yes, sir. Yes. It's the final of tower ladder, but you got two engines that are midway through the process. And timing this all to you'll go there and see this um, is, is huge to see it from the whole process. And again, you know, we're not just, you know, we're not just going and, and, and you know, ordering whatever car and going and picking it up and just driving it home like so many people do. This is, like you said before, this is an investment you're making for your community. So that final inspection you know, the design process we talked about is huge and seeking input, talking to the right people, having the right committee. And and let me let me do this uh, resource-wise before we I bring, mention this last thing. Um, 
Chief Ashman would probably be a great resource. Him and Jeremy, what, what are their two emails for our listeners? If people want to reach out to them and say, hey, you know, to, to, to John Ashman, look, you've been doing this. He's been specking rigs. God, it's got to be 20, 20 25 years. Yeah. He did it to almost 12 for me, and he was yeah. doing it before them. And, and you know, that's a great resource. What's his email if guys want to reach out to him and say, look, I just need someone to talk to about this. I'm new at this, or we're, we're getting ready to start the process. Can can you talk for a half hour, you know, 45 minutes on the phone and kind of help me with some things or whatever? What, what's his email address? Yeah, so uh, Chief Ashman, you can reach him at uh, J Ashman, first initial, last name, J Ashman at cityoflewisville.com. And, uh, um, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Jones, uh, or Captain Jones is jjones at cityoflewisville.com or anyone can contact me and I can put you in, in, in touch with the right people. There so, you go. Yeah. There you go. Louisville folks is L E W I S. I always have to say that because yeah. a lot of people spell it wrong, but, um, so we're, again, from, from the first part of the process through the middle, uh, ask it for help and advice. Don't be afraid, folks. Um, you know, when you're at the shows, kick the tires, walk around, go talk to the people, take a look, open compartments, look and see how things are. You know, there's a lot of these rigs. There's been a there's been a tremendous amount of thought uh, and and hard work and sweat put into the design and and everything else. Take a look and see what people are using. It shouldn't be a surprise. It shouldn't be the first time you've seen something when they pull up on your apron with the new rig so what do you guys what do they bring in the the tower ladder home uh well we're gonna we're gonna uh uh i think it takes about um you know a week to um as soon as we're to uh, get done with that so we'll get that we'll get the tower ladder back uh and and i think it'll take us it it you know the 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 final process is, is once, once they're done up here, we'll find as much as we can. We'll we'll uh, we'll do as much as we can. But anyway, it'll come back, and then it'll go to a uh, it'll go to a make ready facility to uh, to do a couple of things, and then um, uh, so hopefully hopefully it will be back uh, within a couple of weeks, and then um, you know, I'm hoping that that we will have this particular uh, tower ladder back and in service uh operational in in probably about a month or so very cool very cool well hey folks you know we we uh, we had a few more guests uh, lined up for today and it just didn't work out um uh we'll get them on here again uh terry and i are here every third wednesday um next month buddy you, you got it by yourself i'll talk to you in a second <laughs> surprise surprise um but um uh, again, reach out to reach out to to the people around you that are doing this. Uh, ask for some help. Ask for some advice. Uh, go, you know, if you can, you know, if you can make the trip. If you're somewhere, you know, I know a lot of the manufacturers, Terry, are very accommodating. If they know you're going to be in town, stop by. They have someone. They always someone that can give you a tour, show you what they do, how they do it, so on and so forth. Um, you know, if you get a chance, uh, uh, please do that. Um, hey, you can get a hold of me. At Chief Lasky, L E S K Y, at gmail.com. Terry, your email address? It's uh, first initial, last name. So it's T McGrath, M C G R A T H. Uh, you can get me at T McGrath at cityoflewisville.com. Perfect, perfect. Hey, hey to, our, to our viewers, our folks that joined us today, thank you so much. Hey, we're on Facebook, Twitter. The web, uh, if you need to get a hold of us, like, like Terry just said, head over to one of those or shoot us an email. Our next show uh, date um, is, what is it, May 19th, T? Our next show is, I'm sorry, May 19th, uh, is June 19th. June 19th uh, will be our next show. Uh, Fire Engineering always has some great shows every Wednesday here at 12 p.m. Central Time, 1 p.m. Eastern um, with some awesome people. Don't forget the radio shows that are on every night. Uh, during the week with some, some great groups. Uh, Terry and I uh, would really, again, like you to to please uh, say a little prayer and think about those that are serving our law enforcement family. This is their their week, the National Police Week, so don't forget those that, that take care of us and protect us. Uh, and in closing, Terry and I always ask you, 
to keep the men and women serving in armed forces in your thoughts and prayers. And remember, never forgetting means never forgetting. Terry, that's it, buddy. We're good. Yeah, I appreciate it. Sorry, I apologize for the uh, for the technical problems, but uh, but uh, we're good. You know, yeah, we. Uh, but uh, but yeah, we're good. All right, folks. Hey, be safe and God bless you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Jim.